Hi class, uh, in this lecture we want to talk about cars and specifically car loans. Like um, you ever, when you go to purchase a new car or a used car and they uh, run some calculations and they come up and say, oh, this will be your monthly payment. Um, this is the formula, this is the method they use to calculate that. Okay, so we have some objectives in this uh, lecture. So the first is we want to compute the monthly payment and interest costs for our car loans. Second thing we want to do is we want to understand the types of leasing contracts, just kind of talking you through that, um, understand the pros and cons of leasing versus buying a car. Then I want to talk about uh, the different kinds of car insurance. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll compare monthly payments of new and used cars, see which one could be cheaper. And then we want to solve some problems related to owning and operating a car, like going through the costs. Okay, so first off, a loan that you pay off with uh, weekly or monthly payments or payments in some other time period, you know, however they want to define it, is called an installment loan. So all car loans are installment loans. The advantage of an installment loan is that the consumer gets to use the product immediately. The disadvantage is that the interest can add a substantial amount to the cost of purchase. Okay, that's what happens with cars. So let's begin with a car loan in which you make uh, regular monthly payments called fixed installment payments. Okay, so the regular payment amount, how much you have to pay per month, we denote or we call PMT, all right, all right, that's the payment amount, is required to pay a loan, to repay a loan of P dollars. So P is going to be how much you borrowed, all right, paid N times per year, so that'll usually be 12, over T years, okay, where T would be the number of years, and R is your annual interest rate, okay, so, you know, if you're borrowing at 5% or 6%, whatever. Okay, so you need a couple things. You need the how much you're borrowing, the rate, the number of times you're going to pay per month, and um, the number of years. So your regular payment amount is equal to P times R divided by N. All of that divided by 1 minus, and then in parentheses, 1 plus R divided by N, and that raised to the negative N times T power. So have your calculator ready um, with you because we're going to be... Um, I'm going to show you how to use your calculator to do all this. Okay, so suppose you decide to borrow $20,000 for a new car. Okay, so you can select one of the following loans, each requiring regular monthly payments. So you could have do a three-year loan at 7%, or you could do a five-year loan at 9%. All right, let's find the monthly payment and total interest for loan A, find the monthly payment and total interest for loan B, and then let's compare the monthly payments and the total interest for the two. Okay, so here's the deal. You're gonna borrow $20,000. Okay, so that's your P in here, all right? We know that you are going to um, make regular monthly payments. So my N is 12. The only thing that's different from problem to problem is the R and the T. Okay, the rate changes based on the number of years. All right, so let's do the problem for the first one. Okay, so three years at 7%. All right, so you can see here I have, um, this worked out. So let me show you how you're going to plug this into your calculator. All right, so you're going to do this all in one step on your trusty calculator here. Your regular monthly payment that you're going to have to make. You're going to take the amount you're going to borrow, the principal here, the 20,000. You're going to multiply that in parentheses by the rate divided by number of installments per year. In this case, it's 12 because it's monthly. I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to divide that. I'm going to need one set of parentheses here. Then it's going to be 1 minus. Then I'm going to have another set of parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12. Close that parentheses. And I'm going to raise that to, to do another set of parentheses, negative 12 times three power. Now close that parenthesis. All right, so this parenthesis set with this one, this one with this one, so I have to close the outer one now. Okay, so to borrow $20,000 for a car at a 7% interest rate over three years, look at this, it's going to cost you $617.54. Rounding it, it's going to cost $618 a month. Wow. All right, so to find um, the total that you would spend on this, take 618, 
I'm going to multiply it by the 12 months that I'm going to pay for three years. So 12 times three. And I, the total loan to borrow this money actually cost me $22,248. Subtracting the original cost of the car means you paid $2,248 in interest. That's a lot over three years. I encourage you to do the same thing for the next loan, all right, on your own and see if you can use your calculator to get the following answer, okay? So if you're gonna do it at 9% for five years, okay? So $20,000 still dividing the 9% by 12 years and then changing the three to a five because you're going to a five-year loan. You'll see that your monthly payment actually goes down, all right? So it went from $618 to $415. But now you're paying for an extra two years. So to figure out how much this total costs, take your 415 monthly payment times 12 monthly payments times five years. And now this is actually going to cost you $24,900. So subtracting away the $20,000 that it originally cost you, all right, is $4,900 in interest. Wow, that's a lot too. So just comparing them, all right, you have a $20,000 loan, three years at 7%, your, your uh, monthly payment is 618 and you're, and you're paying $2,248 in interest. Five-year loan at 9%, yes, your monthly payment's lower, but you're going to pay longer, and your total interest is going to be higher, be $4,900. So monthly payments are less that we see for longer loans, but interest is also more for longer loans. Okay, so keep that in mind whenever you go get a car loan. All right, so there's something called leasing a car. So leasing is the practice of paying a specified amount of money over a specified period for the use of a product. Leasing is basically a long-term rental agreement. There's something called a closed-end lease. So each month you make a fixed payment based on estimated usage, right? So when the lease ends, you return your car and pay for mileage in excess of your estimate. So usually when you lease a car, you'll get something like $12,000 a year you can put on your car. Um, so if you go over that at the end of your lease, you have to pay extra for that. All right, so then there's something called an open-end lease. Each month you make the fixed payment based on the car's residual value. So residual value is the estimated resale value of the car at the end of the lease and is determined by the dealer. So when the lease ends, you return the car and make a payment based on the appraised value at the time compared to its residual value. So if the appraised value is less than the residual value stated in the lease, you pay all or a portion of the difference. But if the appraised value is greater than or equal to the residual value, you owe nothing you might receive a refund, All right? Usually most leases are these closed end leases for cars in, in, in practice. All right, so some advantages, leases require only a small down payment or no down payment at all. Lease payments for a new car are often lower than loan payments for the same car. So most people can lease a, a, a more expensive car than they would be able to buy, okay? Uh, so when the lease ends, you return the car to the dealer and you do not have to be concerned about selling the car at all. The disadvantages is uh, when the lease ends, you don't own the car, all right? Like I said, that's, that's a, that could be an issue. So most lease agreements also have mileage limits, 12,000 to 15,000 miles per year is common. So if you exceed the number of miles allowed, there can be definitely considerable charges. So when mileage penalties and other costs at the end of the leasing period are taken into consideration, the total cost of lease is almost always more expensive than financing a car. So when leasing the car, you are responsible for keeping it in perfect condition, okay? So you are liable for any damages to the car. Leasing doesn't cover maintenance, and there are penalties for ending the lease early. So there's a lot of disadvantages. Let's talk about auto insurance. So, um, you know, if you buy a car, you have to have insurance on it. So when you purchase insurance, you buy protection against loss associated with unexpected events. So different types of coverages are associated with auto insurance. But the one required uh, by nearly every state is liability insurance. So there are two components of liability insurance. There's bodily injury liability that covers the cost of lawsuits if someone is injured or killed in an accident, in which you are at fault. There's property damage liability, which covers damage to other cars and properties from neglect operation of your vehicle. Hopefully you never have to experience any of these. 
There's also collision coverage, pays for damage or loss of your car if you're in any accident. And um, then there's comprehensive, which protects your car from perils such as fire, theft, falling objects, acts of nature, or collision with an animal. Uh, actually, when you get your own car, I encourage you to get all these coverages. Most, most places, at least in New York and where I live in New Jersey, will offer you all these. All right, so let's talk about uh, saving money with a used car. So suppose that you are thinking about buying a car and have narrowed down your choices to two options. New car option. The new car costs $25,000 and can be financed with a four-year loan at 7.9%. Okay, the used car option. So it's a three-year-old model of the same car, but it costs $14,000 and can be financed with a four-year loan at 8.45%. All right, so let's talk. What is the difference in the monthly payments between financing the new car and financing the used car? What you just got to use that formula to figure out the monthly payments. Okay, so determining the monthly payment of the new car, your 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 monthly payment is equal to the amount you borrowed, twenty five thousand, divided by rate, divided by the number of times you're going to finance per month or per year, excuse me, which is monthly. So you take zero point zero seven nine, divide that by twelve, because the interest rate is seven point nine percent. Divide all that by one minus one and parentheses 1 plus 0 0.079 divided by 12 that raised to the minus 12 times 4 because this one's going to be a four-year loan all right going back um, the new car is a four-year loan and your monthly payment is going to be if you plug this correctly into your calculator which you should verify is $609 is your monthly payment so the monthly payment for the new car whew, pretty expensive all right, looking for the used car. So this year, this one is going to be um, uh, the same information, just plugging it in um, and you'll get that the uh, four-year loan on this one. So sorry for that up here. It says a three-year loan, but it's a typo. It's a four-year loan. This one ends up being $345. So the monthly payments for the used car here are approximately 345. So the difference in monthly payments between the new car Loan, which is 609 and used car um, ends up being $264. So it's considerate. All right, so let's just end talking about the, the money pit of car ownership. So buying a car is a huge expense, obviously. So to make matters worse, the car continues costing you money after you purchase it. All right, these costs include operating expenses such as fuel, maintenance, tires, tolls, parking, and cleaning. Yikes. So the cost also includes ownership expenses such as insurance, license fees, registration fees, taxes, and interest on your loan. Crazy. So if you look here, um, these are the estimated annual costs of owning and operating a car. This is back from 2016, and this is only based on 15,000 miles per year. So you can see the cost per mile is, is increases as the larger the car you own, and then also the cost per year increases the larger the car. So like, for example, I have a four-wheel drive SUV. This is what it's projecting my costs per year are, to be almost $11,000 a year just to own my car and operate it. Okay, it seems about right, actually, between monthly payment, gas, tolls, uh, maintenance. It, it adds up. All right, so let's talk about the cost of gasoline. So annual fuel consumption, all right, annual fuel expense, how much you spend. So take your annual miles driven divided by the uh, miles per gallon that you get on your car, and then multiply that by the price per gallon. All right, so that's how many, if you wanna figure out how much you're spending just on gas. All right, so suppose that you drive 24,000 miles per year, that's about what I drive, and gas average is $4 a gallon, yikes, right? What will you save in annual fuel expense by owning a hybrid car averaging 50 miles per gallon rather than an SUV averaging 12 miles per gallon? And suppose you deposit your monthly fuel savings at the end of the uh, month into an annuity that pays 7.3% compounded monthly. How much will you have saved at the end of six years? Well, let's figure out the um, uh, annual fuel expense for the two cars. So for both the hybrid and the SUV, you're going to drive 24,000 miles a year. You divide that by how much miles per gallon they're getting. So the hybrid gets 50, the SUV gets 12. Multiply that by the cost of the miles per gallon. And you can see that the hybrid costs $1,920. The SUV costs $8,000. So 
So by owning the hybrid rather than the SUV, you're saving $6,080 in annual fuel expenses, which is a ton of money. All right, so now what we're saying is take that savings and put it into a annuity that pays 7.3% that's compounded monthly for six years. All right, you're doing this every year, remember, because that's how much you're saving every year in fuel. Well, if you go back and um, look at the um, value of the annuity, a formula from the previous section, all right, you take how much you're saving per month, all right, so we're going to divide that per year, how much we're saving per month, which is $507 per month. Multiply that by one plus the rate. Well, I told you the rate was 7.3% uh, compounded monthly. To, to, and then the 12 months times the six year, subtract away that one, divided by the rate divided by 12. And if you do this correctly with a calculator, you end up getting that the annuity after six years, all right, would have given you $45,634. Wow. So you will have saved that approximate amount at the end of the six years. So this illustrates how driving a car that consumes less gas obviously can yield um, significant savings for your future. So something to consider when you go to buy a car, consider that gas mileage because that, that really adds up.